Hey everybody, this is Hercules Pedix, founder, curator, docent, and gift shop employee of the Hercules Pedix Academy of Comic Book Studies. Today we're going to be looking at canned corn comics. The subtitle is A Canned Heat Folly. And the reason why is because this was a comic published by the band Canned Heat. Well, they didn't necessarily publish it, but their record company did. Um, this was included in uh, every copy of their album Future Blues which came out in 1969. Oh, I'm sorry, 1970. The copyright date on this is 69, but it technically came out in 1970. But um, copies of this were also distributed to head shops with this 10 cent uh, price tag on it because basically it was an ad for the album, so they didn't care. Um, apparently, many stores slapped 25 cent stickers on it to make a little more money. So it's pretty hard to find these copies with uh, just the 10 cent uh, original price tag on it. Um, this is the work of, uh, the writer is Neil Aberman, and the artist is Bo Schnepf. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. And, uh, he does pretty nice, uh, this Bo Schnepf guy does, a uh, pretty nice hippie psychedelic art. It's pretty good, even though I don't think these guys did anything else in Underground Comics. So, uh, kind of interesting. I, I bet this guy was just a graphic designer, and the record company hired him. That's my, uh, theory. Pretty nice cover. Pretty fun, uh, hippie shit going on so basically these are all little stories about each of the band members they all get a little story and uh starts off with bear tales and i guess bob the bear height was born out in uh the woods outside of torrance california his parents were uh farmers uh the father had to go to jail and the uh, mother and her son, uh, the bear, were ran out of town. And uh, to make some money, the bear went off to sea with Captain Lafitte. The very S. Clay Wilson is these, uh, what he draws these uh, sailors here. He probably just got some old Captain Piscum's comics for research. Maybe that's why. So he ends up getting arrested because it's an illegal shrimping boat, I guess. And he's on a chain gang in Mississippi. And one day, a traveling blues band, later to become Canned Heat, stopped at the farm for a free meal. They heard uh, Bob the Bear singing, and they said, hey, you got to join us. So here's the other members of Canned Heat that we will soon be introduced to and learn their origin stories. Next, we learned about uh, the story's called Blind Owl, and this is about Al the Owl Wilson. Apparently, he was blind as a kid because he was staring at the sun. His father took him to Lourdes, France, where he had a miracle cure. He uh, lived uh, on a farm in Kansas for a little while and ha had to have a shotgun marriage because of an indiscretion with a sheep. But I guess it didn't work out, so uh, he ditched her, and he um, he entered the Pillsbury Bake Off, where his surprise biscuits won the Bake Off, and he kind of he he would basically put a harmonica in each of the biscuits. But then uh, he found himself in San Francisco with flour in his hair. <laughs> That's a pretty good pun. You know, because he's a baker, you get it? One day, a traveling blues band, later to become Canned Heat, stopped at the Bake Off for a free meal. And, and they saw Blind Owl. And they got him to join the band. Next, we we're introduced to the mole. I guess the mole, uh, his uh, parents were Buster Crabbe and Elizabeth Taylor. So he grew up in Hollywood, you know, trained to be an actor. But he couldn't take the pressure. So he became a faith healer. Which was his, his childhood dream. One day, a traveling blues band later to become Can Heat stopped at the Crusade for a free meal. 
and uh, the mole was playing his little gut bucket bass and singing, and uh, they enticed him away from the religious crusade with uh, promises of fame, fortune, and chicks. And uh, he leaves. He leaves the ministry. This is my favorite cartoony in the book where he draws like in this like Aztec Mexican style. I kind of like this stuff. So now we learn about Fito, the drummer. So Fito lived in Tijuana. And uh, he opened his own employment agency through which many young girls of Tijuana found work. This is some really nice looking psychedelic art. I like this a lot. So uh, he moves to Florida, becomes an alligator wrestler. And uh, one day, a traveling blues band, later to become Can't Eat, stopped at the ranch for a free meal. And they saw him pounding on these alligators and they figured, wow, he'd be a great drummer. The way he's pounding those alligators, it's, it's got great rhythm. And here we see him wailing away on the drums like a Tasmanian devil. Next we got Raccoon's Tunes, subtitled Snake. So he grew up uh, in the country. I'm sorry, Henry the Raccoon Vestine, that's his name. Born up in Nebraska. He was spirited away by uh, what his later mother... Uh, what his mother later described to police as a large cow. Ten years later, they found him wandering around the California highways, mooing loudly. He goes to this uh, juvenile facility. I have a feeling the guy just dropped acid for this panel. This panel is just nuts. It doesn't really have anything to do with the story. It's kind of cool, though. So he yearns to be free from this place. And one guy, this, uh, a producer shows up and signs, has him sign a contract to perform in this, uh, this rock opera, this rock musical. On opening night, a traveling blues band later to become Can't Heat stopped at the hospital for a free meal. And they recruited him. So then we have like two origins in one. So now we go to Harvey the Snake Mandel. And uh, I guess his mother was a snake. And his grandmother, the, the snake grandmother, she never liked the fact that she was married to this guy. Yeah, he was beneath the social station of the family. So she convinces uh, his mom, Harvey's mom, to leave him, come live with her, and, uh, you know, bring Harvey along. Harvey grows up in this room. He has, he's locked up until his 18th birthday. It's full of pig's knuckles and a guitar. And he learns how to be a really good guitarist. Because of the limited subject matter in his cell, uh, we see some of the songs he wrote during that time. Just a square pig in a round hole. Pig on my heart. So he's looking for a free meal now. And he sees this concert in the park where they're giving out food and Cantita is the main attraction. And so he eats the raccoon and then takes his place in the band. He does a 14 hour guitar solo. And the band huddles together and says, you know, I hate to sound pragmatic, but he's really good. And we do need a new lead guitar player since he ate the last one. Let's take him into the band. So I don't know if in real life that guy, the raccoon, 
if uh, Harvey, um, oh, not, not Harvey, the other guy's name, the raccoon. I wonder if he, he OD'd or something or died and, and left the band. In the last panel, we just see the cartoonist at his drawing board, Bo, Bo Schniff. Have a kind of groovy inside back cover here. That's some nice hippie lettering there. Has the address to the Canteed Fan Club. And there's their record uh, label logo. So they probably ponied up the money for this, I imagine. And then we get some really nice psychedelic back cover. That's pretty groovy. It's weird though, it's kind of unfortunate. It's not as good as the art in the comic itself. But I just like uh, the, the lysergicness of it. So there you go, guys. Uh, Canned Corn Comics. Um, very interesting. This was the first of the underground comics that uh, kind of dealt with rock and roll music. I mean, there, Jefferson Airship had their grunt comic. There was a Pink Floyd Underground. There was a few other ones, and uh, this was the first. And uh, I guess... Uh, According to the Comics Joint website, you know, it it's represents how, like, marketable hippie culture was. You know, the the fat cats were realizing, hey, we could really co-op this shit if we want to move some product. But I hope you enjoyed looking at this, and I hope to see you next time here at the Hercules Pedics Academy of Comic Book Studies.